scoop the buttock flesh away from the sitting bones. If you need a little bit more height to sit on, you can have um, a bolster or a couple of foam pads just to release the groin. Roll the shoulders back and down a couple of times. Flatten the shoulder blades into the back and Imagine that you have your own pair of eyes on the side, seeing you from the profile. And how would that um, image be? The posture that you have at the moment, is it a little bit hollowed in the chest or are the shoulders uh, going back? Also, is the neck long? Is the spine completely uh, straight? Imagine there's someone observing you from the side. Lift the chest, open across the shoulders, open across the collarbones, relax the legs. And now start closing your eyes and bringing the uh, two hands together in front of you. Take the thumbs to the sternum. Lift one more inhale and lift the chest. Lift the cervical spine and the base of the skull up. So one more time, go back to that idea of someone looking at you from the side, assessing the posture. What would that person see? The shoulder tips should be back. Shoulder blades should be pushing forward. There should be length in the sides of the body and in the spine. The spine should be straight the back of the head in line with the tailbone, not pushing forward. And then take a slightly deeper inhalation than before. Open your mouth and as you exhale, let's all chant. Om. Inhale one more time, lift the chest, bring your head down, drop the palms down on your thighs, and as you raise your head slowly, open your eyes. Okay, let's start extending the legs in front of us, and then we will use the chair straight away. The chair will be just for sitting. <laughs> um, yesterday in the restorative class, we were working with the shoulders and we will continue working um, just to release the upper back and shoulders. Basically, we will be sitting and taking the arms in front of us. We want to take the arms so that they are at the same level with the shoulders. And the, the key here is to isolate the shoulder blades away from the rest of the body. We will want to make a circle with the shoulders and shoulder blades without moving anything else apart from those arms. So we will lift the shoulders up all the way, then move them forwards, which means that the shoulder blades will come away from one another, then roll the shoulders down and bring them back, almost like the the wheels of the train kind of thing so by sitting on the chair you straight your your feet will be at a right angle i will show you i will do it with you engage the upper arm muscles and then lifting the shoulders pulling them forwards rolling them down and then back all the way so you are making a circle but you actually don't want to i'm actually going to take hold of my brand new brick by the way if anyone wants brand new bricks, let's talk to Chris at the very end of the class. Um, pressing the hands into a brick, you will have no mobility in your hands, but only 
the shoulders and shoulder blades. So it is quite an intense technique. We will do it without any props because we will be using our own body weight at the moment. If anyone wants to try with a brick, of course, you're welcome to. Um, but imagine that you have those bricks or that brick between the two palms. And so feet, hip width apart, legs at a right angle, squeeze the hands into one another, well, not into one another, into an imaginary brick, and then lift your shoulders up, extend the shoulder blades forward, so your arms will go forward, then roll the shoulders down, and then bring them back again. And one more circle forward, and then a circle back, Roll the shoulders and make the most of that movement without actually moving the rest of your body at all. Not one millimeter. Great. And then release. So having done that action, the more weight you apply to, to your body, the more difficult the action of isolating that joint becomes. Let's try doing it, first of all, in Uttanasana. So my hands will be flat on the chair. If the, if the wrists are a problem, you can take your hands to hold the sides of the seat. You're basically not super loading your arms in this case because look, your legs are there. Your legs are receiving most of the weight. So from here, try to again, Lift the shoulders, then push the chair away, then move the shoulders back, and one more time, all the circle. So the elbows are locked at all times, but you are being stopped by your um, chair. So the chair will not allow you to move the arms or hands. And all you need to do is lift the shoulders up to your ears, push the chair away from you with your hands, then roll the shoulders down and then post your chest between the upper arms. So start the other way around, bring the chest down, then roll the shoulders back, then Move and separate the shoulder blades and bring your hands, uh, sorry, bring your shoulders all the way up to your ears. Chest down, roll the shoulders down, lift up, pushing the chair away, and then bring the shoulders up to your ears. The more weight we apply to those arms, the more um, we are exercising and also, uh, yes, working on the pulling of those muscles around the shoulder blades and around the, sh the uh, ribs, the back ribs. So now, just, just for measuring purposes, let us all do one downward dog with no movement. One downward dog with the hands on the chair and make sure your, two, your four legs of the chair are on the mat. Extend the arms, extend the torso, extend the shoulders and lengthen the legs, so pull up the knees and thighs. Relax your head and relax also your neck. But keep being active on the shoulders and the arms and check how the arms, shoulders, wrists are behaving. Especially those of us who are recovering from injuries or have very stiff shoulders. Okay, so now from here, Take um, one step more back and take your two feet together. So instead of doing a downward facing dog, we will lower the buttocks a bit and do a plank. There will be, if you feel, take a moment to feel the body, there will be more weight on the hands and arms than when we were here in Uttanasana. So in this plank position, roll the shoulders, up to your ears, then push the chair away, then lower the shoulders, then pose the chest. So you don't again want to move anything else in your body 
apart from the scapula and the shoulders. And then do two rounds the other way around. So when you're going down, the shoulder blades get together and flatten in the back. And when you're going away, so you're pushing the chair away from you, you are separating the shoulder blades. Then you have to lift up and down. And then take a little break. So we will be do, uh, giving the hands, uh, well, not the hands, the wrists, a bit of a break. I have the mat underneath the chair. This is, of course, up to you whether you want to do the pose if you have a chair that's not a um, yoga one. The yoga chairs will be fine. Nobody will fall. The chairs will not break. But other chairs, if they are too precious to you, you will just be doing this action where one leg is bent, the other one is going down, also bent. The toes are going away and I will try to lift the pubic bone and buttocks. This is all that you're going to do if you don't want to try out with the chair or if you don't feel safe doing it with your chair. So it's basically a stretch of the thigh, the front thigh and uh, hip flexors. So my, my front foot is pressing the ground and I will be lifting the chest from there. However, if you do have one chair that will resist it, we will do exactly what I'm asking my teenage son not to do <laughs> like 24 times a day. <laughs> Taking the front of the foot back on the mat and then with my other leg, I will push. So holding my head, I will push, 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 push. And the actual push is coming from the front of my right foot, from the ball of my left foot. And then apart from pressing the feet on the ground, I will take the pubic bone up to the ceiling. Pubic bone lifting and the head can go down all the way or you can be holding the head. I will be holding the head. Uh, especially if you have stiff neck. So um, whichever version you're trying is fine. So one version, you have the foot, uh, the, the leg absolutely at a right angle to the ground, no yoga chairs. You can even lift your buttocks off and lift the pubic bone, lift the pelvis, lift the abdomen up. Otherwise, if you have a yoga chair, Take your upper back onto the backrest, hold your head with, the, with two hands and start tilting the chair, extending the two front hips, but pressing the ground with the ball of the left foot and with the front bones of the right. Lift the pubic bone, lift the navel, send the buttocks back and then release down again. Come back and swap sides. Come back to a uh, sitting position, swap sides. Now the right foot will be the, the pushing one and the left foot will be uh, facing um, up. The sole of the left foot will be facing up to the ceiling. Roll the thighs into one another. If you have a yoga chair or you want to try with one of the other chairs, back to the backrest. Hold your head or let it hang and then pressing the ball of the right foot and pressing also the front of the, of the left foot. Lengthen the buttocks down to the heel and also lengthen the um, front thigh of the left leg. Lift the chair as much as you can. Lift the chair to make a, a very subtle arch of the back. Right. From here, we are going to come back into um, this um, using of the hands and the shoulders. So still with the chair in front of me, we will come into upward facing dog. So we've just warmed up the front of the hips to give myself a little bit of opening to come into upward facing dog. From this upward facing dog has a variety in which we are going to come 
from downward dog or from plank to upward dog, rolling on my toes. And then from here, I will separate the legs and take the hips down, the hips down. This is a very beneficial exercise for those of us who have lumbar spine problems. Um, the dropping of the hips, so the whole body weight is on the arms and on the two feet. Let's do upward dog a couple of times and then we start twisting it. Come to the yoga chair with, or the, sorry, the chair with your hands and then make a downward facing dog with the two feet together to begin with. Big toe mouse in the heels, extend the back, extend the legs, keeping the arms rotating out, keeping the legs extended, Lift your gaze and bring the pubic bone to the seat of the chair. See if you can roll on the toes so the toenails come to the ground. Lift the thighs. Now turn on your toes again and come into downward dog. One more time, upward dog. Turn on the toes, lift the back of the knees, pubic bone to the chair, lift your head and look up. Turn the toes and come back to a downward facing dog. This last one, we will stay here in upward dog. Press the heels of the hands, lift the pubic bone, navel and chest. And now from there, separate your legs, keep advancing, keep coming forward, closer to the, uh, to the seat. Turn your body to the right, so the two feet outside of one foot, inside of the other foot, on the ground. Come back to upward facing dog and back to the other side. Keep, leave or allow the outer hip, the, the hip that's closest to the chair to drop. Now come into downward dog. Close your legs hip width apart, hip width apart. And this time around, we will turn the feet already and then descend. Turn the feet before you come into the pose. So we're not going into upward dog. Let the hip that's closest to the chair drop. And this shoulder will ascend. Now push with that shoulder and come back to downward dog, two hands on the ground. One more time, turn the feet and drop. So my side of the body closest to the chair is dropping and the shoulder is lifting. I am stretching the side of the body as much as I can back to downward dog. We will add some arm extension to this. So turn the feet again to the side, inside of one foot, outside of the other, drop onto the chair. That side hip is dropping, that shoulder is lifting and then my a free arm is lifting up and lowering down over the head, lifting up, lowering down, and then come again to downward dog. Last one to the other side. So you want to turn the feet, drop your hip, and then lift the arm up and then lower it down, go all the way. Keep dropping the hips, extending your torso, Lift the arm, lowering down, and then come back to downward dog. Rest a moment in Uttanasana with the two elbows folded and the head on the chair. Extend the legs anyway. So you have a bit of support for the head. Right, now when you're ready, come back up. We are now going to do something very similar to um, a side Virabhadrasana 2, but with the foot facing forward. So the two feet will be parallel. Let me show you. I will place the right foot on the um, chair. Usually for Virabhadrasana 2, we will be doing that action, foot facing out. Today, I want the foot to face forward. 
So we will go forwards with the body, forwards with the knee, and then glide to the other side. So I want to really take the two knees to a bending. I want my buttocks not to come up and down, up and down, up and down, and also to maintain. So I, I will not use my arms so you can see the buttocks going from one angle to the other, or from one side to the other at the same angle, almost like a spider. Do the, you don't have to, if the arms are useful, you don't have to keep the arms at the back. If the arms are useful, you can interlace your fingers and do it uh, with one interlace. It is quite an intense pose for the standing leg, not so much for the bent leg, for the standing leg. So keep the breath going uh, steadily. Let's do. This would be Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. So from here, simply pivot on that heel and bring the foot to face forward. The knee is already bent. My left leg is straight. So now bend the right knee deeply and come forwards with your body, forwards with your arms. And then without moving your buttocks, glide in the same angle and bend the other leg and straighten the right. Don't lift the buttocks, glide to the other side, knee facing forwards, body facing forward, glide without lifting your buttocks to the other end, bend that knee lower. One more time, keep breathing, and one more time to the left, stretch the right, lower the buttocks, and then come back up. Whew. Let's do the other side. <laughs> you don't need to turn the chair the, around. You, you can simply turn yourselves around and you know what's happening. You know what we're doing. Take a wider step. The wider the step, the more challenging the pose will be. So take the um, left foot now to face the front and it's already, that knee is already bent. My right one is straight. Go forward and to the left. Keep the buttocks exactly where they are. Press on the big toe mound of the left and bend the other one. Bend the right, keep the knee in. Go back to the left. Don't lift your buttocks. Back to the right. Lengthen the leg, then lengthen the left leg, lengthen the right leg. This is the last one. Buttocks down, extend the body forward, lower the buttocks and inhale and come back up. Okay, standing Tadasana, while I show you what we're going to do next. So we have warmed up the shoulders, the thighs, the hip flexors, but we haven't warmed up the elbows and the wrists yet, which will happen now. So basically per Bhattanasana, we, we normally do this pose like that or, or we do it with legs straight. We are going to approach it today in such a way that I am going to come onto the tip of my toes, move the buttocks forward, rolling the thighs in, Bend the elbows and deep. Not deep, as in a deep step. <laughs> dip. Deep as in I'm dipping my croissant in my latte. <laughs> that actual dip. So come onto the toes, move your body forwards and bend until the elbows reach a right angle. The tendency will be for the elbows to want to open out when we are doing that press up. Similarly to what happens when we're doing uh, Chaturanga Dandasana press-ups facing the floor. So you go to, imagine you have a bell that won't allow the elbows to, to roll out. The outer elbow joints need to face the chair backrest. So we have to maintain that grip in the triceps, go down to the floor if possible and 
draw the buttocks and the knees forward. <coughs> Sit on the very edge of the chair. Roll the shoulders back. Sarah, if this is too much for the shoulder, just do this one and take a break, okay? So now, two feet hip width apart, roll the thighs in, squeeze the chair with the two hands, and now come onto the tippy toes, roll the thighs, don't allow the knees to go out, and now push the buttock forward. So now I am doing some very mini back, of, uh, back arch, Bend the elbows, bend the elbows and draw them together. Bend the elbows and dip, 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 dip. And now push your hands down, little edge side of, little finger edge side of the hand and come back to a sitting. That was the whole thing with the instructions. Let's do that five times coming up and back. Um, without a, with a bit more speed and without so many instructions. So up to the toes, go up forwards, dip and push, touch the chair, forwards, dip, push, touch the chair, forwards. I think this is number three. Keep the elbows together. Keep the elbows together. Lift the chest. And when we could stay in, stay in here for a little while, dip down, bend your elbows, stay here, squeezing the elbows, rolling the shoulders down, and then push the elbows, push the hands down, and then bring yourselves back to a chair. You can shake your hands for a moment, and you can also open windows if you're too hot. <laughs> Right, whilst you are taking a break, I will show you. We are preparing ourselves for a very beautiful asana that's called the wild thing. So we are preparing ourselves for that, but it makes, it is such a holistic asana, including a back arch, that we really need to be warmed up for this. So remember when we were here and we were uh, dropping the hip and dropping the hip, so from here, we will drop the hip, but the, the, the front leg, in this case, the right leg, will come forward. And then I will go all the way up and then all the way down again. So my hips drop and lift like a, a swinging dance. Um, the arm is straight at all times. And my standing leg is also straight at all times. Basically, if your shoulders are calling for help, if your arms and wrists are calling for help, do here, take one leg forwards, here, take one leg forwards. So this is if you have uh, if, you, if your shoulders and wrists are already feeling it. Alan, you can take a break doing that. And Sue Stokes, you can take a break doing that as well. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Otherwise, we will come with, um, I will call the right leg, but it's, it's fine, any of those legs, any leg will do. And there will come a time, if, you, if you're facing the camera, there will come a time when you're not facing it anymore because you will be sideways on. So, turn the feet to the left so the left side of your body will be closer to the chair as you drop the hips. And then immediately after, take your right foot in front. Right foot in front is bent. I am still lifting my left shoulder, stretching the left side of my body. And now I want to swing my right arm up together with my torso and hips and bring it down. One more time, straighten the arms, straighten the leg. Okay, can we take it a little bit deeper and now stretch both legs and then come into a full stretch of both legs, a, a fallen triangle pose. And then one more time, bend. Straighten the two legs. 
stretch the right side of the body. Last time, bend and fall on the left side, lift and stretch over to the chair. And now bend the right leg, come back to that downward facing dog, turn the two feet to the other side. Now it's the right side of my body near the chair, bend the left leg and immediately after we will start lifting the hips, lifting the arm and coming back down. I still have my left leg bent, lift from the pushing of your body and hips. Shoulders are not doing the, uh, making the effort, it's the hips. Now, can you straighten both legs and reach for the backrest of the chair? Go back to bending and dropping the right side. Lift, place the two soles of the feet on the ground and extend the two legs. Draw the left arm to the chair. Last one. And extend. Okay, bend the left leg. Drop your body to the chair seat and then be, uh, come into downward facing dog. Lengthen your arms, body. Take a little break in Uttanasana, restful Uttanasana. Change the crossing. Right, we're getting there. <laughs> We will need a little extra effort from our elbows as well now. Let me show you the same thing we did a moment ago. So we were here dropping the, uh, to the left side and then the right, the right leg comes forward and then I will bring the same leg back. So I have it folded forward and then I have it Fold it back. From here, that standing hand, my left hand, will turn to face the backrest. I will bend the elbow and come into Marichyasana one. So from Marichyasana one, I will come up again, lifting, and then going back the same way I came in. I will guide you through it. It's just adding a little bit extra exercise. I will move my chair a bit away from the wall. Make sure the four legs of the chair are on the, seat, on the mat. If not, take the chair against something that's not going to move. The other thing is the hand, if you don't have a yoga chair, your hand will have to move a little to the center. Uh, to the center of the seat instead of being on the on the corner. The yoga chairs have that kind of balance because they are at an angle. The others may not. Just health and safety, yeah? So let's go. First with the right leg. So we're turning to the left with both feet, then drop the two hips to the left. As you bend the right leg forward, then lift, come onto the sole of the left foot, lift your hips and move the leg back, move the right leg back. Those of you who need to turn your hand to face the backrest or move the hand to the middle of the seat, go ahead and do that now. And then lift your arm, lift your buttocks, lift your chest and then Come down, sitting all the way to Marichyasana one. Sit in Marichyasana one, push the chest to face uh, away from the bent leg. Hilary, we're extending the um, left leg, bending the right and facing the piano probably. Yes. You have to bend the other leg, yeah? So, yes. And then your left elbow, uh, your right elbow is again your right hand, right hand.
And now, place your hand. For some reason, Hilary, I think you're going to stand up against the piano. Never mind. We'll do the other side together. Press the, the standing leg foot and hand on the chair. Lift your buttocks up. Lift the buttocks up. Come on to the toes of the right foot. Then bring yourself all the way to face the chair, downward dog. Okay, you will be able to follow me this time, Hillary. Look, you will be facing the camera. So now, turn the two feet to the right. Right side of the body is facing the chair. Now I am bending the left leg in front of me. Then, bring the left leg back. Lift, and then from here we will bring that left hand down, that left knee down, the buttocks down. Mari Chiasana one. Press the bent leg foot and press the chest forward. So we are rotating away from the bent knee leg. From here, I will step strongly on my long leg foot that foot will come fully onto the ground and press on the right hand and lift myself up. Come on to the toes of the bent leg. We're still sideways on. Come to the chair and then downward facing dog. Step forwards with the two legs and release. Okay. So we will avoid all the bringing the leg forwards and bringing the leg back. We will uh, start already bringing the leg back and, and then we'll try to arch the body backwards rather than sideways on, backwards on. Let me show you. So the problem I think it was that I was mirroring, I was calling exactly the opposite leg and hand um hillary or for someone who got mixed up so from here i will turn i will already be turning my right leg back right leg back will be on the tip of the toes of my right leg and then again those of you who have to secure your hand and then instead of coming sideways on i will come back and open, open the collarbones, open the chest, open. You can, you don't have to look back, you can face forward. Open and then come back the same way you came in. Okay, shall we try and do that? It's like a spiraling out. Chris is protecting his precious China in case he <laughs> bashes it. Yes, it's this wild thing. By the way, wild thing, it's called Kamakarasana. Kamakarasana means astonished or the ecstatic unfolding of the dynamic heart. That's a very poetic way of... of describing the, the asana. Anyway, that's the name of it. In the West, they call it the wild thing. Starting with the right leg, yeah? So in downward dog, I will swing my two feet to the left and already bring my right foot behind, my right foot closer to the chair. Press the ball of the left foot on the ground and come to the toe of the right. So you're already halfway arching. If you need to move your, your standing hand, move it more to the center of the seat. Then lift your right arm up, spiral out, unfold, unfold your dynamic hearts. Lengthen the back of the neck, lift the chest more, lift the left side of your chest more, lift the left hip more, and then come back down. Downward dog. Take a couple of inhalations and exhalations there. 
go back up, turn the feet towards the left. Now your right, sorry, the left leg is going to go back. You're turning the feet to the right, the left leg goes back. Flatten the sole of the right foot to the ground. Come onto the tippy toes of the uh, back leg. And now extend your left arm. Secure your right hand, turn the upper arm from the inside out, lift the chest, lift the abdomen, lift the right hip, lift the right shoulder, lift the pubic bone, open the hip, and then go back down. Downward facing dog, rest in there. Inhale, move yourselves forward, and here's where we're going to rest. Um, what I would like is for us to do Prasarita Parottanasana with the chair and that Prasarita will go with a twist as well. This is uh, for those of you who are not going to go into Shishasana uh, or headstand, we will repeat this exercise. It's really, really good. Let me show you from the side. You can be facing the front, but I want you to see the rotation. So first, I will have my legs quite wide just as when we do the classical version of Prasarita. I will have my torso, however, concave and the arms will be extended. From here, if your chair hasn't got a hole for the backrest, you will be folding your elbows. So Sue and Alan and Shelley, if your chairs don't have that hole, Chris as well, you can certainly be folding elbows. After a while, I will ask you to keep the, the um, uh, hips exactly as they are, and we will turn so that your top arm, in this case is, is going to be the right arm, will catch the backrest of the chair and will rotate some more. So the buttocks want to go back and the torso want to extend to the backrest. Let's do this. You can also place a blanket if your chair is too cold, too harsh, or um, you just want a little bit more support for your arms, you can place a blanket on top of the seat. Let's do this. Separate your legs as wide as you can take them. This is also very good for lumbar spine. Um, separate your legs. First of all, move so that your your torso is concave, then come onto the elbows. Then if you can stretch your arms. So for some of us, that means the arms are bent and the body is straight. Others, stick your hands out of the hole. And carry on extending the outer armpits, the outer shoulder blades uh, away from your buttocks. And the buttocks, imagine someone with a belt around your hips is pulling you back. So the legs are firm, they are straight, and the center of your chest is going down a little more. Can you all give one step back? I know that this is going to um, be a nuisance, but step back with your legs and keep your torso exactly where it is so you create some traction. Lift your abdomen and roll the tailbone to the wall behind you. Lift the arches of your feet and squeeze all the way up to the inner groin. Now rotate to the right side. Left side of your body on the chair and your right arm going to the backrest. Pull from the backrest to give you extra leverage. Can you reach, Sue? Yes. Pull from the backrest. You're okay, Kirst. Just put the um, outer side of your armpit, of your left armpit on the chair and carry on straightening your legs. Pull the left buttock back, more back. Uh, realign your hips. Realign your hips. That's it, Dipti. Can you bend the top elbow and pull back more? Top elbow bends and pull back from the chair more. Janet, can you also bend that elbow? You've got the mobility there. Bend the top elbow and face back with that elbow. Pull it back. 
Turn it back. Turn your torso away from the chair. John is regretting having done a holiday and not one single online yoga class the whole week. Come back down with your hands to the seat. Readjust your hips, readjust your spine. First of all, stretch lengthways, pull up the knees and thighs. Make sure your, your feet have not slid away because that's the tendency. Anchor the outer edges of your feet. And now turning. So the right side of your body will be on the chair and the left arm will be on the backrest. Grip the two hips so that the hips are not swinging. It is a grip of the hips and a pulling back from the tailbone. And then lift the top elbow and peep your head and your center chest through that gap between the two arms. Great. Okay, come back up to the center. And those of us who are going to do Shishasana, you can do Shishasana now. Uh, you can even do Shishasana in the middle of the room with a chair behind your back um, to give you some reference. Otherwise, don't fold the chairs away though, because we're going to be using them for Samangasana. Um, if you're not going upside down, if you're not going upside down, you can repeat what we have just done. You can repeat it the other way. So the chair, it, the backrest of the chair is facing you and you will be opening the legs as wide as the chair will allow and then go hooking your elbow outside the seat of the chair. I certainly need bricks for this asana because my legs are too short. Uh, but if you're not going into Shishasana, you can do that. Prasarita Paratanasana with the turning and I am hooking my elbow on the um, outside edge of the seat. And then I'll come to the other side in the same way, turning my body and turning my um, arms. Anyone not going upside down? Yes, Barbara, you're not going upside down today? Okay. That's it, Kirst. Grip, uh, can you place the elbow outside the corner of the seat towards me? Yes, that elbow. That's it. But straighten your arm, yeah? Yes. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Lift your hip bones. John, squeeze your elbows in. Lift the shoulders away from your uh, ears, everybody. Lengthen the legs. Whichever version of this you're doing, lengthen the legs. When you're ready and when, when you need a break, Come back, trying to bring the two toes together at the same time. A bee had gotten into my home studio. I don't know if you could hear it. Right. So, If you have all the props for Hillary and, and um, Dipti and anyone who wants to stay there, stay there as long as you want. And then 
we will do chair sarvangasana. If you prefer to do this with a bolster, you get a bolster. Otherwise, um, well, I'll, I'll wait for you guys to recover from Shashasana and I will show you. We will go to the chair, swing my buttocks and my legs up. This is if you are using a yoga chair, so stocks, you can use the, um, the sofa. Put the bolster like this in the front of the sofa. You sit on the sofa and then first catch the bolster with your elbows, then make the bolster come all the way up to your head and then take your hands if you can thread them underneath the seat of the chair then we are going to come into Viparita Karani then to Barakonasana some of us may be able to take um, to take the chair away with the strength of your feet the outer feet Otherwise, stay here in Savangasana. If you're feeling super strong today, you can even bring the, ha the, sorry, the legs away from the chest seat and lift all the way up. Others, let me show you. To come out, you will slide yourselves out like a wiggly worm until you can roll over onto the right side. Um, if you don't have the props there, Ali or anyone who doesn't have the props, where's Ali? Did I lose her? I oh, know, you're inside now. <laughs> Did you come inside because of the bolster? Um, if you have a brick, you can use the brick and the chair and do exactly the same, but with just the blanket. This is option number two. If you don't have the bolster or if you don't have the chair or you don't want to do this whole thing here. So you will place the two legs on the backrest, lift up, and then you will have the brick for your buttocks. So this brick needs to be all, all the way up and then the, the brick is, is pushing my buttocks away from the chair. So I'm basically doing this set to banda with a brick on the chair. You've got to first go up and then take the brick in between the buttocks and the seat of the chair. This is not compulsory and you can also do it with the brick, um, I mean, without the brick, but the buttocks will not be touching the chair. So you will have to do kind of make the effort yourself with uh, the lift of the sacrum. So what we're looking for is some kind of support for the sacrum and tailbone at the beginning. And then only those of us who are feeling um, up for a challenge, you can certainly um, lift up into full uh, Sarvangasana. I didn't mean to bring you all the way into the house, Ali. So, chair Savangasana, either with a brick or, or with a bolster, yeah? Just like we did last night. Those of you who are already in the pose, come into set to band, uh, sorry, Bada Konasana, soles of the feet together, knees apart, and rest your outer edges of the feet on the backrest of the chair. If you are balancing in the pose with no chair behind you, go straight into Bada Konasana now. That's it, Hilary. You're there. Pin the shoulders down into the support. There you go. And Extend the legs if you're just doing the Viparita Karani. Mm. 
John, can you and Ali, can you thread your hands inside the legs of the chair? Yeah. You'll get better traction and more lift in the chest. Sue, so so Stokes, is your head on the ground? Like the a bit of crown of the head on the ground. Your head is your head slightly on the ground. So I want it to be a tiny bit touching the ground, neck supported, shoulders supported. Those of you going into Barakonasana, open your legs wide into um, Upaviste Konasana, two legs wide apart, two legs wide apart. You can go back up if you want to. Dipti, can you open the legs wide? Let go of the chair and keep the buttocks exactly where they are. Open the legs out to the sides. Open them wider, 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 wider. Yes, exactly. And those of us who feel strong enough, close your legs together and move your buttocks away from the seat of the chair. You can come via kind of halasana-ish. Yes, that's it. That's it. Well done. This is Sarvangasana 2. Well done. And then, Janet, are you okay? <laughs> right. Come back, find your chair behind you and place your feet safely on the backrest or on the legs and come down sliding like a uh, wiggly womb. Well, we can stay uh, with the legs on the chair for Shavasana if you so prefer, or you can um, bring your legs completely to the ground. You can rest with the calf muscles on some height, or you can come completely to the ground. Hillary, is your foot okay? Did you just bash against it? or? cramp. Um, you can uh, move the bolster away from your buttocks if you're resting on the chair. Set yourselves for Shavasana. Open the arms wide. Lengthen the back of the head away from, thank you. Uh, lengthen the back of the head away from your shoulders. Lengthen the back of the waist away towards your buttocks and knees. And then open the hands to rest to face the ceiling. Open the chest, open the heart. Think on, of the fantastic variations of asanas we did today and you were all able to do them. Feel the tingling in your body and relax. Use the exhalation to relax. Breathe in deeply to lift the chest and open and broaden across the collarbones. And as you exhale, completely expand the back of the body, the back of the legs, the back of the arms, and the back of the head. Basically, everything that is in touch with some support.
How often do we spend time on the things you're not so good at? How often do you put your attention on the aspects of your life that need work and the dedication of your time? This is the practice of cultivating the opposite, a perspective that is counterintuitive to the progress of life. Growing up, we are taught to lean into what we excel at. We nurture our skills and celebrate our offerings to the world. If you're good at writing, you should write books. If you're great at sports, you should be an athlete. If you can cook and prepare delicious meals, you should become a chef. Life has become about being good at what we are good at. And so throughout our lives, we cultivate our skills and strong capabilities because they give us a strong sense of identity and purpose that in turn give us a certain place within society. This is also so we can be seen as valuable to the people around us and the contributor to our communities. Our lives and abilities are specialized rather than generalized. We're praised for our productivity, but how often do we lean to the other way, away from what we excel at towards what we, which challenge challenges us? There is so much growth when we cultivate the opposite in our actions, for it gives, gifts us real and honest perspective. When we lean away from our familiarities and dedicate our attention and consideration towards what, that which is new or different, we cultivate a true evolution in balance and self-awareness of our perceived weaknesses. If at a younger age you realized you were great at maths, your life may have been guided along along a logical and analytical path. If you excelled at art and creative endeavors, then perhaps you were guided along this colorful path. Inevitably, your skills become your identity. So if you're analytical, you may not think of yourself as creative. If you're an artist, you may not consider yourself logical. But what if we are? and just simply haven't nurtured these qualities within us. When we choose to cultivate the opposite and move away from familiarity, we're choosing a path to regain the balance of a well-rounded and fully experienced life. For us to grow, we must lean towards our discomforts. We, uh, the more we do this, even in smaller moments, the more we find that challenges in our lives become less challenging. In time, our capabilities and capacity increase. We must always make way for our weaknesses, for they teach us how to find our way back to a balanced way of being. This is from a book that doesn't have much to do with yoga, but the Yenga Yoga method approaches life in the same exact way. So always balancing symmetrically, giving attention to the weaker side, practicing both sides of the asanas at the same time. If we cannot kick strongly enough with one leg, carry on kicking with that leg until it becomes the strong one, etc. And then we can one by one bring the hands to rest on the chest. Take your legs up to your chest as well and roll. If you are still on a bolster, move away from the bolster before you roll. And then hold your head with your right hand. Lift yourselves up to a sitting position, bringing the head up last. Bring your hands to your chest and bow. Give thanks to your body and your mind because 
they were so healthy that we could do this year session today. And also thank the teachers before us who showed us the way so generously. <laughs>